Hi everybody, we'll be uh, talking about scientific theories and laws today. Uh, oftentimes the word theory gets thrown around kind of casually, like as in, I have a theory about why this happened. Um, and that's, that's okay, but in that case you're using it as an opinion, a hunch, or a guess. Uh, but in science, a theory is something that has a lot of scientific evidence behind it. Um, there's a link here. I hope you watched this video before watching this one video um, <clears throat> that kind of explains the difference between the two. And I'm going to do my best with some notes here for you. Okay, so a scientific law states what happens. It describes broad patterns observed in the natural world, so it covers a lot of, of instances. A few key things about a scientific law is that it always happens the same way. But it doesn't explain why something is happening, and that's a key difference between a law and a theory. It is based on repeated observations, and it often has math involved. So if you see some sort of a rate um, or an equation, you are definitely dealing with a scientific law. Okay. Compared to theories, few laws exist uh, for many reasons. It's difficult to prove every aspect of a certain event. Um, laws are very general, cover many, many circumstances, and we as humans are limited in our technology, in our ability to travel, in an, and in our ability to test certain things, okay? Um, the, uh, just a few examples. A law of acceleration is the second law, it's Newton's second law of motion, and we will be covering this later this year. But it states that the greater an object's mass, the greater the force it exerts or it causes. And the mathematical equation for that is right here. Ma uh, sorry, force equals mass times acceleration. Notice there's no, ex there's no description of why. It just says that that's the way it is. Another of Newton's laws is the law of action and reaction forces. For every force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Okay. Again, no explanation of why or how, it just states that that's how it is. And then, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this one, the law of gravity. Unsupported objects fall toward Earth, um, and the reason they fall toward Earth is because Earth has a huge amount of mass. And here is, this is actually the equation that describes gravity. Okay. There are many others. We are not going to go through all of the scientific laws that, that have ever existed or that do exist. Um, but if you know of others, feel free to jot them down here in your notebook. Scientific theories, on the other hand, are well-tested explanations of how. So if you were in class right now, I'd be circling this about 30 times. Explanation of how a natural event occurs that is backed by scientific evidence. Okay. Um, there are key words that you should look for uh, that can tip you off that you're talking about a theory. Um, and those words are because, caused by, the reason is, or due to. So it's attempting to explain why one of those natural events is happening, okay? Um, also, this is not an opinion. Um, when somebody says that they don't believe a theory, that, that's interesting to me because it is based on a lot of fact and observation, okay? Um, if theories change, are they any good? Absolutely, uh, because as time goes on, we as humans and as researchers, we may uncover new evidence. Our technology may improve uh, that can give us more information as to what's happening. Um, and this evidence is duplicated and duplicated and, re and we find that it's reliable, then the theory should also change. Okay, that's just good science. There, that doesn't mean that the theory was weak. It just means that the science got better. Okay, as we keep learning and finding new evidence, theories must also change and improve to reflect that. Okay, just think about any of the <laughs> uh, the theories of healthcare back when, like George Washington was was around. Some of the theories they had were not very good, but it was the best that they had at the time. Um, and you and I have all benefited from you know, the science of medicine getting better over the years. So here are just a couple of, of examples so you can kind of notice the difference between these and laws. The theory of plate tectonics says that earth plates move due to convection currents in the mantle. Um, it's really hard to 
100% prove all this, right? Because we can't actually physically cut the earth in half and check and watch this in real time. But we have lots of evidence that suggests that this is the reason that Earth's plates move, okay? Um, another one is the theory of evolution. Species change over time because of changes in genetic codes. Um, and that, I mean, that's, that's a very simplistic view of it. Uh, but we have, we can see some of that change in the fossil record. So that's, and that's all that evolution really means is change over time. Um, and this is sort of a controversial one, but it has, um, it has also helped us make advances in medicine as well when it comes to understanding the diseases that we encounter and how those, you know, like the common cold and the flu, they can change over time. So that's just one small example of evolution. Uh, several, there are so many others, we don't have time to cover all the theories in the world, but the theory of relativity from our good friend Einstein, um, germ theory was an interesting one. Um, and the list goes on. If you know of any others, feel free to list them here. And that is it for the notes portion of this video. Um, but I wanted to cover your assignment that goes along with this. Please, please, please read the uh, directions for, for this. This will be posted in Google Classroom. Um, circle the appropriate word. There's a way to insert a circle. Okay. You make a circle, and then you can right-click on it. I don't want any fill, actually, but I do want the outline to be a pretty, how about a pretty purple, okay? And then you can resize that circle, okay? Well, my classroom has one smart board. One is a number, so that's quantitative. The beauty of this is you can just copy and paste, and now you have another circle that you can move around if you need to. Okay, um, so that's for that part. You're also going to underline the part of the statement that helped you decide whether it was quant or qual, so you're going to underline, okay? Um, and then what? right over here, you're going to type in, what was the sense that you used? Did you use sight, hearing, or would you have used sight, hearing, smell, touch, or taste to make that determination? So this is a review from last week. And then if you keep scrolling, some definitions you'll fill in. And then here again, label each of these as theory or law. Then go ahead and underline the word or words that helped you to decide. So I hope that helps you with the first video and, uh, or first set of notes and assignment from this week. Um, let me know if you have questions. Email me at my school Gmail address and I'll be happy to get back to you. Okay, good luck.